Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be looking at the question find pivot index and we'll be going through two solutions. So first the brute force and then a way more optimized solution in constant time. Okay, so real quickly, we're going to be given an integer array called nums and the goal is to find the pivot index of this array. So the pivot index is the index where the sum of all the numbers strictly to the left of the index is equal to the sum and all the numbers strictly to the right of the index is equal to its sum. So both the left and the right sums are the same essentially. So if we are at the index zero, the left sum is zero. And if we're at the last index, the right sum is going to be zero. So now the goal is to return the leftmost pivot index. And if it doesn't exist, we return negative one. So in this case, let's just look at this example of one, seven, three, six, five, six, where the answer is three. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we have the example over here and the small numbers on the top over here are the indices, okay? So let's see what that actually means. So, well, we know this is the answer. So let's take a look at everything, all the elements to the left of it. So these are all the elements and its sum is seven plus three plus one, which is nothing else but 11. Now, everything to the right of it are the numbers five and six. So that is also a sum, gives us a sum of one. So they both equal to the same thing, which makes sense on why the index three is the pivot index. So let's first look at a brute force solution. Now, the solution here is going to be to keep track of the left sums at each index. And we're also going to keep track of the right sums of each index. And then we're going to just compare the two of them whenever they're the same, well, that's the index we're looking for. So let's just see what this looks like real quickly. And once we understand this, we can actually move on to another concept. Okay, so we have the left sum over here. So the first one is going to be zero because the left of the zero index is nothing. It's going to be zero. Cool. So now we go on to the first index. So what is the left of the first index? Well, that's the number one. Cool. So now we have the second index. So what is on the left of the second index? Well, we have the number seven and one. So now this is where we can actually apply a small trick. So we can add the number seven plus one, but instead all we can do is we can just look at the previous number, the cumulative, the previous, uh, previous cumulative sum we have and add it with the current number we're at. So that's one plus seven, which is eight. So this is going to make more sense when we're at the third index, for example. Now over here, we can either do one plus seven plus three. So that's three additional additions, right? Instead, we could just do the previous cumulative sum, which accounts for both of these values and the current value itself. So now we're just doing one addition instead of three additions, which are already just going to be repeated. So in this case, it's just three plus eight, which is 11, right? So now we go to the fourth index. So now that's going to be six plus 11, 17. And now at the fifth index, it's going to be 17 plus five, which is 22. Perfect. So now this is the left sum. Now let's see how we can get the right sum. Now in the right sum, how do we find the first element? So there's two ways we can do this. So we can actually go to the zeroth index and find all the elements to the right of it. So it's sum, right? So what is that going to be? So seven plus three, 10, that's going to be 22, 27, right? So all of this together is going to be 27. But let's actually try to come up with a algorithm or formula that is going to be a lot more intuitive. So instead, all we could do is we could get the entire sum. Now the total sum is of the entire array is going to be 28, right? So 27 plus one. So the total sum, I'll just write it over here, is equal to 28. Now, how do we find out what is the right sum of the zeroth index? So in simple words, that is going to be the total sum minus the current value that we are on. Got it? So that's just going to be 28 minus one. Okay. So that's nothing else but the number 27, right? So we're just going to kind of continue that pattern. So now we're at this index, the first index. So over here, it's going to be all the values to the right of 27. So now we're actually not going to include two values. We're not going to include the value seven itself. And we're not going to include any values to the left of seven. So that's just going to be 28 minus seven minus one, which well is 20, right? And another way to look at it is just, it's just the 27 minus seven. So let's just kind of follow that pattern and then let's make more sense of it as we go on. So now at the second index, well, we don't want to include the number three as well. So 20 minus three is 17. Okay. 
So now we go on to the third index. So that's 17 minus three, sorry, 17 minus six, which is going to be the number 11. And then we're at 11 minus five, which is six. And finally, the last value is zero, which is what we expect because there's nothing to write of it. So now in this case, now we're gonna compare the values. So 0, 27, 1, 20, 8, uh, 17, and then we have 11 and 11, right? So this is perfect, right? So we have a match, and that means that the third index is going to be a pivot index, okay, perfect. So now, now the question over here is, how can we actually further decompose the right something we were doing? So just to look at it furthermore, let's take the uh, third index, for example, right? So what exactly are we doing? So we have the total sum. Now we don't want to include the number itself, and we also don't want to include everything to the left of it. What is another way to say that? Another way is that we're taking the total value, we don't want to include the current number, which is, well, six in this case, and we don't want to include the sum or all the values to the left of six, and that is nothing else but the left sum, in this case, at the index three, right? So this is gonna be a very useful relationship that we can use to actually improve our solution. So let's see how we can do that, but before that, Let's take a look at what the time complexity is going to be and space, right? So to make the left sum table, it's going to take n and uh, space and time. And for the right sum, it's going to take an additional uh, n space and time. Now we're going to make the comparisons, which is going to take an additional n time. So that is a total of theta 3n for the time complexity, or just big O of n. And the space complexity is going to be 2n, or just big O of n, right? So now, can we try to get any of these down to constant space or constant time? Obviously, we cannot do constant time because we will have to iterate through the entire array at least once, but we can try to do constant space. And the previous relationship that I pointed out is going to be very helpful for that. So let's actually see how we can do that and avoid making these two tables and just keep track of everything inside of a variable. Okay, so now, like before, we're gonna keep track of left sum in a variable. Well, in the beginning, it's zero. And we're also gonna keep track, or just we're gonna have the total sum with us, okay? And the total sum was 28, right? It's the same as before. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in a for loop, right? Where we're gonna iterate through each of the values, okay? So now in this, so now what we're gonna do is the first value, right? So we have the left sum and we wanna compare it with the right sum, okay? We're checking if this, is, if this condition here is true. Now, how do we find the right sum? Well, the right sum is like we said, right? It's gonna be the total sum, all right, so the total sum minus the current value itself because we don't want to include that. So I'll just call it the current value, cur. And we want to exclude everything to the left of it. Now, everything to the left of it is as good as excluding the current left sum we have, which in the beginning is zero. So right now we're going to be comparing. So I'll just kind of make a table so it's easy to look at. So we're going to have the index, we're going to have the left, and we're going to have the right. So the index over here is zero, okay? Now, okay, sorry. Uh, now we have the left sum, which is also zero. Now the right sum is gonna be 28 minus the actual value one and the left sum, which is zero. So that's nothing else but 27. So now we compare the left and the right values. Are they the same? They are not, so we continue. So now we go on to index one. So the left sum, well now we have to add the value over here, right? So now we add the add to the left sum by adding one. So that's zero plus one, which is one. So L is one. And now the right value is gonna be, well, 28 minus the current value, which is seven, and everything to the left of seven, which is nothing else but one in this case, okay? So that's equal to 20. So they're not the same again. So now we go on to the index two. So at the index two, before that we had to increment the left sum, so that's one plus seven, which is eight. So we have eight, and now we're gonna do 28 minus the current value three, and everything to the left of it, seven plus one in other words, which is eight, right? Or the L sum. And that is going to give us a value of 17. Cool. And now they're not the same again, so we go to the third index. Before that, we increment the left sum, so that's gonna be eight plus three, which is 11. And so we're comparing 11 with 28 minus the current value, which is, well, six, minus the left sum, which is 11. 
So that is nothing else but 28 minus 17, right? And that is just going to add up to the value 11. So in this case, the left and the right are equal. So we end up returning the index three. So now with this condition over here, so finding the sum is going to take big O of n, that is going to take n time. Then we're going to take another n time in the worst case condition to actually do this uh, calculation over here. So that's going to be theta two n, or in other words, just big O of n. And finally, the space complexity is going to be constant space, right? We're not using any extra space. Everything is just being stored in these two variables over here. So that's going to be it. And this is going to be the best solution that we could find. So uh, n space, okay, big O of n and constant space. And now let's see what this looks like in code. Okay, so we're going to have a variable for the left sum, and we're also going to keep track of the total, which is, well, just the sum of nums. Okay, so now we're going to go in our for loop. So we're going to do for index in range length of nums. Okay, so now over here we have to make our uh, check, which is if the left sum is equal to the right sum. Now, if this condition is true, then in that case, we that means we found our pivot index and we're going to return the index. Now, if this is not the case, we have to increment the left sum with the current value and the current value is nothing else but nums index. Now, we also need to define the R sum over here. So I'll just define it over here. So that's just going to be the total sum minus the current value we're on, which is just nums index subtracted by everything to the left of nums index, which like I said, is just left sum. So since we're not using this variable ever again, I'm just gonna replace it uh, right over here, right? Instead of storing it in a variable. So this is going to be our code. Now, if we don't, if we go to the entire for loop not returning anything, that means we don't have such an index and we return negative one. So let's submit this. So thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you